This is the two-wheel drive short course Insanity Off-Road Championship. I'm Cam Cullen, joined by Jason Rona. Jason, thanks for joining me in the booth. Absolutely. It's nice to be here and, and see how this race is going to go. That surface is going to be tricky. Oh, yeah. Temps are in the 30s in this old barn. If you're just joining us for the first time, welcome. We used to race in a backyard circuit, but changed it up in 23. I really like the track, having the, the new indoor condition. Pretty neat for the series. Uh, obviously, a allows you a little more flexibility to run depending on the weather. You don't really have any limitations. The series standings entering today have the electric Braden Banchi in first, fresh off a decisive win last round. He'll look to hold off RRL great Brent Post. It's definitely nice that you kind of have a field of the different vehicle makes and manufacturers. Cold definitely impacts the track. The track's pretty much frozen. So you definitely need to run super soft tires. I'm using a heat gun to heat my tires as well as saucing. You just need to have the tires warm. It helps with the first opening laps. Once you start driving, of course, the tires will naturally heat up, but it helps to do it artificially in the beginning. We have to thank Team Losi Racing. Basically, I'm driving short course trucks that are no longer in production, but they were built so well at the time that they're still competitive today. So as their motto says, engineering wins. Gotta thank J Concepts. The tires are fantastic. You know, they make tires that cover the entire industry. They've got everything that I need to, to see the track. That being said, we need some rehabs for short course and mini trucking. And last but not least, I have to thank Brian Lee for having this awesome facility for us to race at. This RRL RC presentation is brought to you in part by A Main Hobbies, your RC off road headquarters. Free shipping on eligible orders. And by Naughty Boy RC. Keep it naughty. Click the links in the description to shop. Well, that's one way to heat your tires. That's all very familiar. After our two qualifying rounds, here's the starting grid for our main event. Post ended up getting the TQ here, so he got an extra point. The points leader, he's in third, and you split them here. Bonchi's gonna have to get an extra little tug out of his truck to win this and bring home the championship. It's green flag racing, and already in the orange truck, I try to put a move on post. The guy's already getting spun around here at the beginning. Lasher got the worst end of that one. Around turn five they go. Oh, and Banchi a little loose. You touched on it at the top of the show. This track surface is cold. We turn our attention to the front. Post seeking his fifth short course league title, and his career resume in this league is longer than a holiday weekend. Banchi in trouble again. Yeah, I mean, I can see the Kyosho truck here. We talked about earlier how there's a nice spread of different type of vehicles being used here. And I saw the Kyosho truck there. Uh, that was a big one, uh, you know, in our day running on the national tour. The Ultima was always a good short course, but he's he's having some trouble here in traffic. Young Braden Banchi shuffled all the way to the back of the pack after that hard spill. Yeah, I mean, this is real common of what you see in short course racing. If you have a long line of jumps like that, one racer starts flipping, crashing, you usually take a couple trucks with you, and you end up going for a ride there. Don't miss continuing coverage of the 2023 Insanity Off-Road Championship as our league's best face off and look to take home some hardware. Watch it all here on RRL RC. Jason, what can you share about leading races like this? Do nerves set in? A bunch of times, yeah. My strength in racing as a racer was putting in very clean overall runs. I was fast, but also probably capable of running a very clean run. And that's what you do. You try to earn yourself a spot up front where you can get away from the traffic get away from these problems and then you use your best way to attack a track or an event like this and it's to make the least amount of mistakes by being consistently the quickest that's what i would try to do i would try to get out front and try to let the damage happen behind you and then the pressure is on them to catch you usually nine times out of ten in a situation like this in a difficult surface track they're going to make mistakes trying to catch you and then your lead's just going to get bigger Kirk now about two and a half seconds behind post, trying to get past Rosebaum in lap traffic. He's not having any luck around turn three, and Kirk goes for a big ride. I'll overtake him for second. JR, I have a feeling you're about to put Kirk on blast. You have to be a smart racer. You have to know who you're racing, and when you catch up to some of these cars that you could see could be a problem, you have to actually be the one that's avoiding it. You're not going to just assume they're going to let you go or have a great day out there. Like You have to actually attack it with the mindset that I'm going to give 
give this driver, this truck, a little extra time because you know what's going to happen. Kirk finally gets around lap traffic, but that's going to hurt him. He went into the tubing and made a hard collision with Banam. He'll fall back to fourth place. Banam, Captain Consistency as we call him in this league, running his best laps of the race in these last four, now moves into third place. Kirk looks all out of rhythm since that run-in with Rosebaum, but a nice pass over the tabletop to take third place back. What can you share with viewers about these tricky conditions? When you get on a track like this, there's a big differential between the areas that have the grip and the areas that don't. What happens is you get used to driving where the grip is on the surface, but if you get outside of that, you pretty much have no traction. When you're driving on the line and on the groove, you can do tremendously good things lap time wise but you get out of that you're in trouble there's definitely a wide variety of tire choices for this race brady and bocce seen here over rotating again on this turn if you drive in really hard it's going to cost you on the exit he has j concept carvers in the front and pro on hole shots in the rear and they just do not seem to be hooking up meanwhile our leader post is running j concept ellipses a bar tire Jason, what would you be running here at this event? I would probably have the sprinters and the bar tire like the ellipse, and I would experiment between the front and rear or matching front and rear. I probably would take it a little conservative. If you're saucing tires, I would do the rears. Be a little more conservative on the front because that can get you into trouble having too much steering. I think the heating of the tires they did was probably a good idea considering it was 30-something degrees. I'm sure it was freezing. Oh, what a shame, man. Aaron Lasher's day is done. Another one of those racers who just flat out struggled today. He's running on old, beaten up, soft, pro-line hole shots. He called them, quote-unquote, goodwill tires. We set our sights on the battle for third. Captain America looking for some late race heroics over the rather shaky truck of Kirk. We saw this truck several times, you know, before already here. He's had some problems with traffic. He's trying to get around clean. We could see in a lot of different video clips he's had issues, but I think that here you have to remain calm. You have to try to put together your best laps, your best jumps, and try to hold them off. Time dwindles down as I get caught at the line. Kirk has a bobble on the A Main Hobby's last lap. It's a drag race down the straight. It looks like Banam may have got him. This is going to take a video review. Post secures his fifth SCT League Championship. Unbelievable. When you're coming through a situation like this, you can see he got a bad jump off that double and they kind of collided here again. He's on the outside. They're kind of dashing to the finish line. And uh, you can see here, you know, we get a kind of a photo finish in a sense coming to the line. Here's a look at our naughty boy RC A main results. Our timing system gave Kirk the edge over Banam. Thankfully, our point standings are not affected. Very close and fast lap. The top four, five drivers all within a couple tenths. Jack a little bit slower but you can see with the consistency got fourth over Braden there so obviously that 35 years is paying off. Captain America, Captain Consistency whatever, Jack's a dog! If you're getting into where you have multiple nicknames you've been around a while right? All four rounds of car felt great. I think I TQ'd every round. I had a tough break week one and race three. Turned it around one, two and four and held off Braden for the points. Special thanks to uh, Cam for helped me host this in the back end stuff while I called the races and uh, Brian for obviously for hosting us an awesome facility I can't wait to see what happens next year the final point standings have who else but the speed king Brent Post on top he's kind of the Jordan of the series obviously he got his game together for this particular race because he went for the TQ he got the win he didn't get a fast lap though I noticed yeah that belonged to Banshee closing thoughts I see this kind of continuing to progress I, what I'd like to see is more track maintenance different track layouts as the series kicks off again. I could see some really cool things happening here. And it's just kind of neat to, to see that we have this style of racing and short course is, is alive and doing so well for the series. Stay tuned for continuing coverage of the Insanity Off-Road Championship. We can't thank Jason Rona enough for his time. And until next time, folks, for Jason Rona, I'm Cam Cullen saying thanks for watching.